Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your host, Sage D. Summer here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to bring you all a new What If. This being the What If movie to What If Naruto had Broly's potential. Thank you all so much for tuning into this What If. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. Now, with that being said, let's get started. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're responsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? So to begin the wave, we're now gonna start out with Naruto's origins Dating way back, all the way to the Ninetales attack We see most of the events playing out pretty similar to canon all the way up to the point where Minato ended up taking Kushina away, as well as Naruto away to safety, while the Ninetales was occupied by the rest of the shinobi. So this is where events would then change differently. You see Kushina wanting to help out the village and also help out her husband, she decides to leave Naruto there, telling him how much she loves him and everything before leaving. As this would leave Naruto completely alone in the estate, all the while Minato and Kushina would be trying their best to restrain the Ninetales. We will see currently right now making his rounds to the village and currently avoiding all of the destruction, will be none other than Orochimaru. You see, in this timeline, Orochimaru had actually been there for the Ninetales attack. As during the time of the Ninetales attack, Orochimaru had actually been there to scope out the village, trying to see if there was any glaring weaknesses that he could take advantage of later. And due to that, sooner or later, when the Ninetales had actually arrived to destroy the village, Orochimaru would have been there, as he decided to actually use this opportunity to steal something valuable from the village, this being the Scroll of Sealing. As while the rest of the village was too occupied with the Nine Tails, Orochimaru would use the opportunity to steal the scroll of ceilings, as well as kill a couple of the Hidden Leaf Shinobi. And once that was taken care of, Orochimaru would then try to leave the village, but in the process of trying to leave the village, he would actually end up encountering the Minato estate. As by this point in the story, Minato had not yet arrived to pick up Naruto to do the ceiling process. So currently right now, the Minato estate would actually be in ruins because of the Nine Tails attack. In seeing this, Orochimaru's first plan was just to simply ignore it. But as he was about to leave though, this is when he actually ends up hearing the cries of Naruto. As Naruto was currently right now unharmed, laying in the wreckage of the Minato estate. Now Orochimaru would go as he eventually ends up meeting up with the young Naruto. Now immediately, Orochimaru is able to tell that this was the son of Minato and Kushina, and seeing the uses of keeping the child around, he decides to take Naruto. But just as he was in the process of taking Naruto though, this is when suddenly he would then be blown back as Naruto's energy begins to actually release itself. As Naruto's hair changes from the normal yellow color to now a greenish color. As you see, in the process of Orochimaru taking away Naruto, Naruto's body would actually sense all, of this, all the distress and chaos all around it. This ends up causing it to tap into Naruto's potential, as this causes Naruto to immediately begin to tap into that Saiyan power, as a way as a self-defense mechanism, if you could call it that. And due to this, Naruto's body will be amped up, being more durable, more stronger, and pretty much everything will be boosted at that very moment. And Orochimaru will just look at it with fascination, as he couldn't just believe how powerful the spawn of both Minato and Kushina really was. As this brings a smile onto his face. As with that last reaction from Orochimaru, this is where we then see Orochimaru then take Naruto and leave the village, as eventually Minato will end up returning as he decides to look for Naruto, only to see the wreckage and see no Naruto in sight. This makes Minato immediately assume that Naruto had unfortunately passed away, which caused him to break down in tears. But unfortunately right now, the village was still in chaos, so he had no choice but to continue working as the Hokage. As he had to find out a new plan to seal with the Ninetales. Luckily, that plan came in the form of Sasuke Uchiha, as Fugaku actually ended up arriving at the scene, giving Sasuke to Minato, telling him to use his son for sealing the Ninetales away. Now, this would actually be against the request of both Itachi as well as... Uh, Makoto, since they both did not want Sasuke's life to be at risk, but unfortunately, Fugaku was stubborn, and he was going to do it whether they like it or not. And Minato, although he did not want this to happen at all, unfortunately, it seems as if there was no other choice. So, yeah, the rest of the events will actually end up playing out the exact same way, with the only difference here being the fact that, well, Sasuke ends up getting the Nine Tails seat inside of him, and Naruto doesn't. And also, Minato's and Kushina's final thoughts would not be going to Sasuke, but instead to Naruto, as they both hoped that somehow, some way, Naruto had survived, and if Naruto didn't, they hoped that they were able to reunite in the afterlife. As this will bring the end to the Nine Tails attack, leading us to now a time skip. As we see Naruto now growing up in the captivity of Orochimaru, we will see Orochimaru turning Naruto into his passion project, this being the ultimate weapon. As in Orochimaru's own words, Naruto will be nothing more but a destroyer. As he would have no thoughts, no feelings, pretty much no emotions whatsoever, as his only purpose was meant to destroy everything, to take in training, to eat when required, and after that go right back to bed. 
and it would be a rinse and repeat process. As with this process, Orochimaru was able to find out more and more information about Naruto as he tried to test out all of Naruto's abilities, trying to see how far Naruto's potential can go. And so far, Naruto's potential seems to be about endless, as Orochimaru even thought about the idea of giving Naruto other Kekigenkais. As for Naruto, he had no thoughts or feelings in the matter at all, mostly because of the fact that the way Orochimaru had actually raised Naruto and make him grow up is that he literally broke down Naruto's emotions, as any feeling of happiness, sadness, fear, all of that was just completely gone, as Orochimaru had turned Naruto into an emotionless tool. As this would go on for quite a couple of years, with Naruto doing nothing more but the same rinse and repeat process of getting up, going through the training Orochimaru gave him, destroy anything that Orochimaru had told him to do, and then after that, let Orochimaru run a few experiments before going back to rest, as the same process would go on for a couple of years, until eventually, it would then suddenly come to an end. As during the time when Orochimaru was actually trying to test out Kagenkai's for Naruto, trying to find the best one that was suited for him, he would actually end up getting his base raided by none other than Jiraiya and his spy network. As thanks to Jiraiya and his forces catching Orochimaru off guard, a large majority of Orochimaru's forces will end up getting captured, and if any of them tried to resist, they'll end up getting killed. Orochimaru was seeing as he was the last one there, and also seeing the fact that Naruto was the last one there, he tried his best to actually rush over to Naruto so that way he can end up using his weapon on Jiraiya. But unfortunately, Jiraiya ended up fighting Orochimaru first, and Orochimaru, he couldn't get to Naruto, as this ends up leading to some complication. They ended up fighting for a little bit until eventually Orochimaru then realized that currently right now, he's not exactly at the right level to face off against Jiraiya. So with no other choice, he has to make a getaway while also leaving his, pra his passion project in the process. Now Jiraiya, after making sure that Orochimaru was gone, decided to check out the base, making sure that everything was taken care of. As him and his forces would end up taking care of all the grunts and taking them away, this is when he actually ended up stopping as one of the grunts, or I'm sorry, one of his men would actually end up telling Jiraiya that there was something that he needs to check out. Jiraiya would end up going to the location that his man was talking about, until eventually he ends up arriving at the area where Naruto was being held at. As Naruto will be currently in his pod, as he will be chained up to the brim, along with a gas mask as he will be floating in some unknown liquid. In seeing Naruto, Jiraiya is able to instantly tell that that was the son of both Minato and Kushina. As without any hesitation, he ripped apart the pod like it was nothing, as he immediately begins to check on the boy, making sure that he was alive. And luckily, Naruto was, as he opened up his eyes to check on Jiraiya, with Jiraiya being really happy to see that the boy was alive and well, as he actually looks up into the sky hoping that Minato and Kushina were seeing this. But you see, saying that the boy was alive was one thing, but saying that he was well was something completely different. Cause you see, when Jiraiya decides to actually check on Naruto once again, he will see something that makes his blood run cold. As Naruto, instead of having a joyous expression or really showing any expression at all, he would be completely blank, as he would have no expression whatsoever. As Jiraiya would end up looking at Naruto, he would try to see any sense of sadness, happiness, or really any feelings at all at the matter, but unfortunately Naruto showed nothing. This made Jiraiya begin to hesitate as he begins to talk to Naruto asking if he feels any pain or if he was hungry or really anything at all, only for Naruto to say something that made Jiraiya's heart break a little bit. As Naruto would ask Jiraiya what exactly are his orders, and Jiraiya after hearing this feels his heart break as he literally ends up seeing Naruto who's supposed to be a child, supposed to be enjoying life, turn into a mindless weapon. As after hearing how Naruto talks as well as the way he looks, Jiraiya ends up making a vow that he's gonna end up killing Orochimaru the next time he sees him and he was not going to hold back as well. As we now continue on with the story. Now after taking care of all of Orochimaru's grunts and taking everything that's valuable, including Naruto, Jiraiya ends up returning back to the Hidden Leaf Village with Naruto in tow. As we now turn to when they finally end up arriving to the Hidden Leaf Village. Jiraiya would immediately take Naruto to Haruzen, who currently right now is the current Hokage, and after explaining everything to Haruzen, Haruzen would end up trying his best to end up reinstating Naruto into society. But unfortunately, that was not going to happen in a very long time, as we're forced to do another time skip. As currently, right now, on their final years of the Academy will be none other than the future Genin of Konoha. As currently, right now, they were going on their final year, as after this year, they can finally end up becoming Shinobis. Now, as everyone will be excited for this, except for one kid who was sitting in the background, this is when suddenly Iroko would then enter into the classroom, and accompany him will be none other than Naruto. Except Naruto was keeping his identity hidden as he was currently right now wearing a black hoodie on. Now soon, all the attention of the class will then turn to Naruto before they turn back to Iruka as he begins to actually explain that Naruto was going to be joining their class. Now this will end up a lighting protest from everyone in the classroom except for a few 
as they couldn't believe that this kid was joining at their very final year, as after all, he did not go through the three year process. But unfortunately, Aruka was the one who was in charge of the classroom, so with no other choice, Naruto ends up joining them. Now this leads to many kids feeling already begrudgingly upset about this, but unfortunately there was nothing they were able to do, as Naruto would be forced to sit down right in the very back of the class. And at the very back of the class, currently sitting down would also end up being another person, this being Sasuke Uchiha, and currently the host of the Ninetales Shinjuriki. Now you see Naruto end up sitting down as both him and Sasuke are forced to sit next to each other, and they immediately look at each other before finally end up turning their attention back to the classroom, as they had nothing to say to each other. As just like that, we can now continue on with the story. As we now move forward to one year, as we turn our attention back to Naruto, because you see, during this timeline, Naruto, instead of being outgoing, fun, and charismatic, instead Naruto would actually be quite introverted. He didn't talk to anyone and no one really talked to him. As most of the time, kids would actually think that Naruto was weird, that he was creepy, as this actually ended up causing them to label Naruto as a freak. And Naruto, he would hear these comments, but at the end of the day, he didn't really care about it at all. As I said, Naruto actually had to learn to really adjust to this new lifestyle. It was odd as literally the only thing that Naruto ever knew was to be a destroyer. But yet for the next two years that went by, Naruto was not a destroyer, but simply a boy. No, no, that wasn't the right way to put it. As Naruto didn't even know how to describe himself from those two years. As the only thing Naruto ever did during, throughout this time was just simply learn how it, how it was like in Konoha. Although there was one thing that Naruto did end up learning about himself, it was the simple fact that Naruto actually liked the company of animals. As Naruto, although he wasn't really good with people and liked to keep his distance away from them, when it came to animals, he'd just simply be at peace. And these animals actually felt a comforting aura from Naruto as well, as it was honestly quite strange. After all, Naruto had slaughtered multiple people by this point, as Orochimaru had turned the boy into a destroyer, a killer. But yet, even though Naruto had done all that, these animals still approached him, which caused Naruto to be very thankful for them. As due to that, Naruto, whenever he was around animals, it actually allowed him to be at peace, to be relaxed, and to feel a sense of warmth that he still had no idea what to call it. Now, Hiruzen, although he wasn't happy with all the progress that Naruto had made, he was still happy to see that Naruto made progress nonetheless, even if that progress came from mostly the animals that were in Konoha. But still, nonetheless, he was grateful for it. As finally, after so many years, he would actually be able to see Naruto be at peace, even if it was only for a little bit. Now, the only thing that Hiruzen was truly worried for is that now that Naruto was going to become a Genin, all he could hope for is the fact that Naruto would be able to handle the stress of killing once again. As Hiruzen was scared that if Naruto ends up killing once again, he may lose that little bit of humanity that he had gained back. As with that final thought in mind, this is where we now turn our attention to finding the team setups. As just like in the main timeline, the team will be the same, with Team 7 being Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura while the rest of the teams will remain the same as well. Now eventually the teams ends up meeting up with Kakashi as he ends up giving his introduction as everyone ended up giving their own introductions. Now the only thing that was really different here is the fact that Naruto doesn't really say anything at all, just simply says his name, since after all he didn't really have his own interests or any likes, which by the way Naruto does not know that he actually likes animals, he does not know that. All he knows is that he feels a sense of comfort towards them. Oh well, Sasuke, well, Sasuke just simply ends up saying the same thing, and for Sakura, in this timeline, she surprisingly doesn't actually have a crush on Sasuke. I know, shocking. No, instead, the only reason why she doesn't have a crush on Sasuke in this one is because of the fact that Sasuke's reputation as the Ninetales Jinjiriki caused her parents to tell her to stay away from him, and Sakura, being the one to please her parents, would follow their example and make sure to stay away from him, as well as giving a little bit of rudeness to him as well as this will end up leading to a very interesting dynamic between Team 7, with Kakashi being the moderator of all of it, as he sides at his new team. As this is where we now turn our attention to the belt test. The outcome of the belt test does not change at all as Team 7 still fails. However, the real difference here is the fact that Kakashi nearly ends up dying to Naruto. And by that I mean it is during this time when Naruto was actually facing off against Kakashi, since Naruto was the only one that just, you know, didn't run away at all, Mostly because of the fact that he knew that this was a this was a test meant to be failed. During the fight, Kakashi actually ends up seeing Naruto beginning to tap in into his potential. And by that, Naruto ends up reverting back to the killer that he once was. 
As Naruto begins to get more and more flashes of trauma that he actually got in from being Orochimaru's passion project, eventually over time, Naruto begins to fall back into old habits, as he begins to actually try using full-on lethal force, as well as beginning to tap into more and more of that potential, as his hair actually changes from the yellowish color to a small greenish color as well, and slowly but surely going back to the full green color that he once had when he tapped into his full potential. Now, seeing this, Kakashi would be thrown off guard as Naruto would gradually begin to get stronger and stronger than him, to the point where he actually even tries to release the Sharingan, which ends up failing miserably as Naruto actually ends up stopping Kakashi right before he can pull off his headband, as after that Naruto ends up snapping Kakashi's arm and kicking him into a tree, but Kakashi nearly losing consciousness after that one kick. Now at this point, Naruto was fully about to go into a kill as he was falling into his bad habits once again. Yet, right before he actually rushes to kill Kakashi though, Naruto gets hit with the trauma once again, as the memories of all his destruction finally ends up hitting him all at once, as his body ends up re reacting violently. He begins to call on to more and more his potential as he tries his best to stop it as he did not want to go through this again, but unfortunately it seems as if nothing was working. Now Kakashi seeing this and seeing he had no other choice, he, he actually ends up using his other hand that was not broken to pull down his headband as he activates a Sharingan putting Naruto under a Genjutsu. Now, although Naruto was actually very close to breaking out of this Genjutsu because he was just simply able to because of his potential, eventually though, Naruto's potential begins to go out of control to the point where Naruto just simply ends up collapsing out of exhaustion. As this ends up saving Kakashi, but also ends up saving the bell test as well. As after that, the bell would then go off, signifying the end. So yeah, after this, Team 7 almost ends up failing, but later on, Kakashi ends up seeing them all end up working together, or more precisely, Sakura deciding to work for with both Sasuke and Naruto, seeing as the fact that both of them were way stronger than her. As in this timeline, both Naruto and Sasuke will be stronger than her canon counterparts. As Sasuke in this timeline, thanks to him being the Ninth Ocean Jiriki, it would allow him to be faster, stronger, and more durable. But not only that, but Sasuke also has a healing factor, and thanks to all that built up trauma from early on from his life, this actually ends up enabling Sasuke to have the three Tomoe Sharingan. And then as for Naruto, well, he has brilliant potential. What more should I say, really? So after seeing this, and after seeing that they were willing to work together, Kakashi would actually deem Team 7 worthy enough to actually end up passing. As just like that, they would then have multiple months of simply doing D rank missions. Now, Naruto throughout this time would actually end up using this opportunity to continue trying to explore more about himself, wondering who exactly he should be. As Naruto throughout this very moment was actually confused about what he was. But even though he didn't know what he was, that didn't mean that he could not discover it. As most of the time throughout the multiple months of doing D-Rank missions, Naruto would just spend that time trying to learn more things about himself. Which, luckily, another thing that Naruto learned was the fact that he simply liked ramen. So, yeah. There's that. But still nonetheless, we have to continue on with the story as we now eventually turn to the Land of the Waves. Now you see, most of the events will play out pretty similarly as Team 7 finally had enough of all the D-Rank missions and decide they want to do a C-Rank. And after a lot of convincing, eventually they were able to make a ruse and agree to this as they decided Tazuna the Bridge Builder to the Land of the Waves safely, as well as guard him from any troubles that may approach them. Now, things will go pretty similar to the main timeline as after everyone ends up getting their things, they end up heading off. And right as they were heading off though, they end up approaching this pond that was actually hidden by both the Chunin brothers. As Team 7 would eventually end up passing the pond, this is when the Demon Brothers then decide to jump out of it as they supposedly end up killing Kakashi. And after killing Kakashi, one of the Demon Brothers then rushes to attack Naruto while the other one tries to attack Sasuke and Sakura. Now when the Demon Brother was actually trying to approach Naruto, Naruto after seeing Kakashi's substitution end up falling to the ground and Kakashi fake spilling all that blood, as he already knew that Kakashi was still alive. This is still end up reminding Naruto about the time that Orochimaru ordered him to slaughter many people, many villages, destroy many homes, and all the time Naruto did with an expressionless face. As after getting reminded of all that trauma, Naruto ends up shifting to that mode, his old killer side of him. As this is where we end up seeing something incredibly dark end up happening. As Naruto ends up just suddenly dodging out of the way of the Demon Brothers attack, before suddenly grabbing the brother's head, and in brutal fashion with one hand, Naruto makes it turn a whole 180, as now the Demon Brother's head was actually facing the opposite direction, causing everyone to witness the scene with horror, as the other brother that was actually trying to attack both Sasuke and Sakura 
He went up turning to his brother to see what Naruto had done as he screams out in pure horror, causing Sasuke to snap back as he ends up knocking the other brother out. But as he does, he kept a close eye on Naruto, making sure that Naruto didn't do anything too frenetic as after all, if Naruto was able to do that to the brother, what would he do to them? As after that, Kakashi ends up making his appearance known, telling them that they all did a good job, but really deep down Kakashi was actually putting his full attention onto Naruto, as now he was really wary, wary of him. As Kakashi by this point had already been informed by Hiruzen about Naruto's origins, and even though he was very deeply upset about everything that happened to him, he still wanted to try his best to see if maybe he can end up salvaging the boy's normal life, but unfortunately it seems as if that was not going to happen anytime soon. As Kakashi ends up walking over, telling them, telling them that they all did a good job, while also commenting that Naruto may have used a little bit too much force, this is when he begins to interrogate the other brother. Now eventually they were to find out all that he could about the Land of the Waves, about Gato, and pretty much that the bridge builder pretty much lied to them, but eventually they do end up sticking to the canon as they decide to continue on with the mission, although Kakashi is very reluctant about it. And in this timeline, he's 100% confident that his team can handle it, it's just that the only thing he was terrified of was the fact that Naruto might actually snap. And not only did he have to worry about Naruto snapping, but he also had to worry about Sasuke snapping as well, since he was also holding the Nine Tails Jinjiriki in his team as well. So yeah, Kakashi pretty much had two loose cannons in his squad, so you could already tell why he was actually pretty afraid to continue on with this mission. But still nonetheless, they end up making their way to the Land of the Waves, and eventually during that time they end up encountering Zabuza as he makes his appearance known. As this is where we end up getting the ultimate fight between both Kakashi and Zabuza. Now you see by this point though, as Kakashi was fighting off against Zabuza, Naruto was actually able to tell about Haku's presence, as Haku was only a few distance away from them. And seeing that he was a threat, Naruto already knew that he had to take care of it, as he decides to actually rush over to the location where Haku was. Now Sasuke seeing this ends up cursing, telling Naruto to get back here, but unfortunately, it was too late, as eventually Kakashi ended up getting trapped in the water prism. And as he was trapped in the water prison, we end up turning our attention to Naruto, who ends up facing off against Haku. Both of, them, both of them begin to fight off against each other as Naruto was severely holding back, as he was trying his hardest not to fall back into his old instincts. All the while, Haku was honestly very confused about his new opponent, since after all, he was only meant to stand by on watch, and not only that, but Naruto seemed to be a Genin, so there was no way that he should be able to keep up with him. He tried amping up his power even further as he tries to make Naruto just simply fall into unconsciousness. As truth be told, he didn't want to kill Naruto. But to Haku's surprise, Naruto would be able to keep up with him with some relative ease, as Naruto was honestly sweating quite a lot which made Haku at first thought that Naruto was pushing himself above his limit, but no, it seemed to be for something else. And the reason for this one is because of the fact that Naruto while fighting Haku, he begins to slowly but surely lose himself in the fight as he feels old instincts begin to kick in. This time however, as Naruto is fighting off against Haku, he's actually able to suppress it as he actually ends up fighting the way that Shinobi is supposed to, or at least the way that Haruzen had described it to him. As thanks to this, Naruto ends up putting up a pretty good fight against Haku, all the way to the point where Haku has to bust out the crystal ice mirrors. Yet even with the Kage Genkai, Haku was not able to beat Naruto, as Naruto actually tapped into a little bit of his potential, causing his hair to actually glow a little bit as this actually allowed Naruto to, to go through a little bit of a mental exhaustion, but still nonetheless he was able to handle the power and actually able to defeat Haku. As now, thanks to Haku being defeated, we actually end up seeing the events play out a little bit differently, as in the main timeline Haku was actually able to rescue Zabuza right before Kakashi could kill him, but in this timeline though, thanks to Kakashi actually being freed by Sasuke and Naruto taking care of Haku, this actually ends up allowing Kakashi to kill Zabuza in one go. And not only that, but thanks to Zabuza being killed off, Haku has no more will to live. As after this, and after eventually end up finding out that Zabuza was gone and that he could not do anything, Haku would ask Naruto to kill him. And Naruto now once again is dealing with the mental the mental struggle, as he feels his killer urges just telling him to get rid of it, to be over with it, but unfortunately he can't. Eventually, though, his team is able to find him along with Kakashi. And even though Kakashi is quite exhausted, he did not want Naruto to go through the process once again. As after what happened with the Demon Brothers, he couldn't afford to let Naruto go through the process once again. As even though he was exhausted, he would still be able to kill Haku, as after that him and his team were able to leave and just complete the rest of the land and the waves with relative ease. As eventually Gato's group would eventually show up, yet luckily Team 7 will actually end up taking it down. As this would end up concluding the land and the waves.
as now that the land of the waves was now completed, this actually ends up causing a quite a few changes to happen to Team 7. As Kakashi actually realizing that only Naruto and Sasuke knew how to fight on, on his team, and not only that, but also realizing that both Naruto and Sasuke had made zero connections at all throughout the entire time in Konoha, and by that I mean they literally connect to no one, this makes Kakashi realize that he has to put in more of an effort to train his students, as he couldn't let them fall into a dark path. As with those thoughts running through his mind, we end up seeing Team 7 returning back to Konoha a little bit earlier than they did in the main timeline, giving time for Kakashi to actually end up going through with his promise as he decides to train up Team 7. Now this actually ends up allowing Team 7 to train up and actually get stronger, as Sakura in this timeline, after seeing how strong both Sasuke and Naruto were, and considering the fact that she realizes that she's now the weakest link on the team, she decides to actually take training very seriously. Sasuke was just simply happy that he got training nonetheless, and as for Naruto, well, he was actually pretty much enjoying what Kakashi was doing. Cause you see, Kakashi was actually trying to make an effort to talk to Naruto, and even though Naruto was very stressed out whenever he did this, he still nonetheless go through the process, as this actually allowed Naruto to be somewhat comfortable around Kakashi, but to also be comfortable around his whole team as well, as even though they weren't exactly friends, they definitely could say that they were acquaintances. As literally thanks to Kakashi's efforts, every last one of Team 7 can communicate with each other with some decency. As with that being said, we can now do a time skip to the tuning exams. Now Team 7 are actually able to skip to the very first portion of it with relative ease, as every last one of them not only show up, but they're actually able to actually pass the very first exams with no difficulties, since every last one of them knew that they were decently intelligent enough to handle the situation. As after that, we can now turn our attention to the Forest of Death as this is where things actually get really interesting. As the process of entering the Forest of Death would remain the same, as Team 7 would eventually end up getting their scroll and end up heading out. Now on the way of actually going to the Forest of Death, they do eventually end up encountering a team, to which they end up taking them down with relative ease. As after that, they end up checking the team to see if they had the same scroll that they needed, and guess what? They did, causing Team 7 to now complete the Forest of Death, or at least that's what they thought. As just as they were about to head out, this is when suddenly a ginormous wind blast would end up sending all the rest of Team 7 flying, as Naruto was the only one to recover from it relatively easily. Now the rest of Team 7 soon follows Naruto's example as they recover from the damage that was done as they turn to face off against their opponent. But just as they do so, this is when Naruto would then feel it, his senses going haywire as events begin to play back on loop practically in his mind, as this is when he actually ends up hearing the familiar voice of Orochimaru calling out to him. As suddenly, stepping out throughout the destroyed area will be none other than Orochimaru, as he had finally made his grand return. Now even though his face looked different, even though his voice sounded different as well, Naruto was able to tell with every fiber of his being that this was Orochimaru without a doubt, as all the events begin to play it back in his mind on loop. As Orochimaru begins to tell Naruto that he's here to take him back, but as he does, he actually ends up seeing Sasuke. And this causes Orochimaru to smile as he tells Naruto that he did a really good job, as apparently Naruto had supposedly brought Sasuke to him. Now Naruto after hearing this begins to tell Orochimaru that he didn't, with Sasuke and Sakura just wondering who this man was. But unfortunately Orochimaru was not here to play games as he immediately begins to attack Team 7. As this will end up causing Team 7 to react to Orochimaru's attack as they all end up jumping away. Well, except for Naruto, which actually forces both of his teammates to grab him and take him away, as currently right now, Naruto is still remembering everything that Orochimaru had done to him, remembering everything that Orochimaru made him do, as his teammates try to snap him out of it. Now over time, Orochimaru would end up seeing what Naruto was doing as he begins to chuckle as he begins to explain to his teammates that Naruto wasn't someone that they knew at all. And after hearing this, Team 7 did not believe this at all, as even though they were not exactly buddy-buddy with each other, they still knew each other well enough as they begin to explain to Orochimaru that he was the one that didn't know Naruto. Now this ends up causing Orochimaru to stop laughing, till suddenly he begins to mock Team 7, as he begins to explain in gruesome details about Naruto's origins, and not only that but everything that Naruto had done, as he begins to explain about all the dark and disturbing things that Naruto had did working under Orochimaru, being his destroyer. As the longer it went on, it caused Team 7 to feel more and more disturbed, as this actually caused both Sasuke and Sakura to unintentionally end up backing away from Naruto a little bit, as Naruto would be there recounting of all the events that Orochimaru would explain. 
as even though this would go on for quite a few moments, eventually both Sasuke and Sakura end up denying it as they stubbornly, as they stubbornly end up declaring that Naruto could never do that. But Rochimaru ends up chuckling, saying that Naruto himself already knows this. As this ends up causing them to stop as they look at Naruto, who by this point was silent throughout the entire story. As Orochimaru begins to cement the fact that Naruto was a destroyer, that he was a monster, and that he had no purpose in this world other to bring chaos and calamity. As Naruto, after hearing this and after recounting all the events, this is when he would then do something shocking, so shocking to the point where even Orochimaru was caught off guard, as everyone will see Naruto suddenly end up crying. Yes, right there in front of the legendary Sani and in front of his teammates, who see Naruto crying for what seemed to be the very first time. As he ends up looking down at his hands, unable to believe all the destruction he caused by them, all the blood that he shedded, as this is when he then realizes fully that he was a destroyer. As this is when suddenly Naruto's emotions begin to, re begin to act violently, which causes him to tap into his potential. As with a scream that literally ends up causing shockwaves all around, Naruto would then turn into a legendary Super Saiyan. His hair would then turn a dark green as he ends up screaming out into the air. As he then turns his attention onto Orochimaru with tears going through his eyes as he rushes over and begins to actually destroy the entire area where Orochimaru once was. Now by this point, Orochimaru will be chuckling as he sees Naruto releasing these emotions as he begins thinking that he can get Naruto under control once again. But unfortunately though, he has never had to deal with Naruto who is having an emotional breakdown. As like I said, Orochimaru had completely removed all of Naruto's emotions as soon as he even began feeling them. But by this point now, Naruto has experienced these emotions, and by this point he was having a full emotional breakdown. As this was a beast that Orochimaru had no idea of countering. As Naruto would continue decimating the entire area with no regard to any life in the matter, as he just simply was trying to find a way to end Orochimaru's life as quickly as possible. As Orochimaru tried his best to do everything in his power to stop Naruto, even bringing out the Kuzanagi blade, to which he had already found out that even though the blade was not able to kill Naruto, it definitely was able to actually knock him out unconscious, as he tries to swing the blade in order to get a cut on Naruto, but to his surprise, as soon as the blade came into contact with Naruto, it would just simply shatter. This would catch Orochimaru off guard as Naruto would then get close enough to the point where he grabs Orochimaru by the neck and simply just twists it as he completely just ends up doing a whole 180 on Orochimaru's head. Now this forces Orochimaru to use a body substitution, but Naruto was not done. As before Orochimaru can get away, Naruto ends up grabbing Orochimaru's arms and actually ends up slamming him hard into the ground like, like the Hulk. Before eventually he ends up slamming him so hard into the ground and onto his back that Orochimaru almost loses consciousness. As it would get even worse. As after that, Naruto would then suddenly end up jumping on Orochimaru's stomach full force as this would cause Orochimaru to actually give up body substitutions. But every single time he would try to substitute, Naruto would be right there, destroying the substitution as it would be a very horrifying sight. With the rest of Team 7 being there to witness the massacre that was happening, as they couldn't believe that Naruto was capable of doing this much damage. As after this goes on for quite a few minutes, we eventually we end up seeing the end of the snake signing supposedly, as Naruto ends up grabbing the very last body substitution by the neck and continues squeezing it until eventually Orochimaru's head just simply pops. With Orochimaru's supposedly last words to Naruto being the fact that he will always be a monster. As Naruto, after hearing this and after finishing off Orochimaru, this is when suddenly the power ends up leaving Naruto as he simply ends up breaking down to the ground, falling to unconsciousness due to exhaustion. As when both Sasuke and Sakura end up approaching Naruto, who is currently unconscious, they end up looking at him with a look of both fear yet sympathy, with most of the sympathy coming from Sasuke. As he actually really, as, as he actually realizes that this was the very first instance of Naruto truly releasing his emotions, as this actually made him feel pity for Naruto. As after that, both Sasuke and Sakura end up taking Naruto to safety, all the while they end up continuing the rest of the tuning exams. Now eventually Naruto will wake up and eventually they're able to accomplish the rest of the tuning exams with little difficulty. As the only thing that really happened was the fact that the dynamic between Team 7 would actually be a little bit tense and awkward since both Sasuke and Sakura were a little bit tense around Naruto and Naruto he just felt like he completely ruined everything with the rest of his team as he actually felt like he ruined the only relationship that he had. As eventually they would then arrive to the preliminaries for every last one of Team 7 advancing to the next round, 
as the only difference here being the fact that Sakura actually ends up, you know, defeating Ino in this timeline, as after that it will be finally time for the one month training. As after Hiruzen actually announced the one month training, he would actually immediately call upon Naruto to come along with him to his office. As Kareem right now, he needs to ask Naruto about the events that transpired. Now Naruto would give a detailed report about everything that happened, and hearing about what happened to Naruto, Hiruzen felt once again deeply ashamed to let something like this happen, as he asked Naruto if he was feeling okay. And you see, this is where we actually take a look at Naruto's psyche, because the thing is, Naruto, even though his mind deeply rejected the idea of, you know, liking killing Orochimaru, Naruto's body, however, it fully enjoyed it. As Naruto, every single time he would destroy something, or every single time his body landed damage on Orochimaru, or caused Orochimaru any type of pain, Naruto's body would then get a wave of satisfaction and excitement because of this, causing Naruto to continue on with the beating. He felt disgusted with himself because of it, and Haruzen himself also felt even more pity for the child since he didn't want Naruto to be like that, as after all, he wanted to at least Naruto salvage even a little bit of his humanity. As is when Haruzen begins to explain to Naruto that he was not a monster, and overall just trying to give Naruto the pep talk, but unfortunately Naruto was not listening, as Naruto still had practically Orochimaru's shadow looming over him, his dark past still being there, watching him all the time. As after that talk, Haruzen would then tell Naruto to actually use this month as a break, as he already knew that Naruto was plenty of strong enough to take on pretty much everyone in the tuning exams, to which Naruto would agree to that thought. Now after Naruto ends up leaving the office, we also end up finding out that Jiraiya was there to listen to everything, as he once again curses out for not being here, mostly because of the fact that he wanted to stop Orochimaru himself, but it seems as if Naruto got his hands on him. But yet Jiraiya was not fully convinced, as he was 100% sure that Orochimaru was still out there, as there was no way the snake was going to be killed off that easily. As this is where we now actually do a time skip through the one month. Now most of the one month will be Naruto once again trying to salvage even a little bit of his humanity, as he connects with animals, eat ramen, and speaking about eating ramen, Naruto actually ends up communicating with both Tiyuchi and his daughter Ayame, as this actually allowed them all to get along quite well, as both Ayame and, Tui and Tiyuchi were actually pretty welcoming to Naruto, being nice to him, being kind to him, and this actually gave Naruto the opportunity to communicate with them, as he actually realizes that even though he did all that stuff to Orochimaru, there would be still some people who were willing to communicate with him, or at least for now at least. Another surprising thing that happened during the one month will be the fact that Team 7 actually got closer after those events had transpired. As Kakashi in this timeline, now seeing that his, that his entire team actually passed the preliminaries, and now that he was actually being much more wise and actually making sure that everyone, you know, got the proper amount of training and actually allowed them all to con communicate and get closer, as this would allow Naruto to communicate with his teammates way better. Because of the fact that since they all have the opportunity to see each other practically every single day, this allowed them to actually talk to Naruto and explain to him that even though what he did was quite brutal and honestly quite horrifying, they tell Naruto that they still see him as a teammate, which actually causes Naruto to be very relieved and very happy about this, as this actually strengthens the, the bond between Team 7, as Kakashi would have watched all of this feeling very happy that he was doing a good job. As this is where we now turn to the events of the tournament. As you see, the events of the tournament actually play out quite similarly. As in the very first match, it will be Naruto facing off against Neji, with Neji openly telling Naruto that while he does not know exactly who he was, he already knew the outcome of this fight, as he thinks thanks to the Hyuga fighting style that he would actually be able to win the fight against Naruto. And Naruto, after hearing this, just simply ignores Neji as he completely just one-shots him. Like literally, he just one-shot the Hyuga prodigy in front of everyone as he, saw, as he shot out a green beam from the palm of his hands. Now everyone would look on in shock because of the fact that they actually thought this fight was going to be a pretty good one since many of them actually heard that Naruto was pretty strong, but they never expect him to be so strong enough to the point where he actually knocks out the Hyuga Prodigy in one blow. As after that, the rest of the fights will play out pretty similarly, Sakura actually ended up getting a chance to fight in this one as she actually ended up fighting off against the sound shinobi that Shino was supposed to fight off against, and she actually beats him thanks to a few genjutsus that Kakashi taught her as well as a few earth jutsus, considering the fact that in this what if, she actually has earth style. As finally, the last fight would actually be Sasuke versus, well, versus Gara, and this would be a very interesting fight, mostly because of the fact that both of them were Jinjurikis. As they both end up entering the arena, immediately most of the fight actually kicks off pretty similarly, as Sasuke would be using his speed to his advantage, as well as using the 3 Tamori Sharingan to get himself an extra boost of speed and strength pretty much dominating Gara when it comes to physical abilities. 
But eventually, Gar would soon have enough of this as he tries to activate the dome in order to stop himself from, you know, receiving any more damage. And this is when Sasuke then busts out the Shidori, with the Shidori being way stronger than it was in canon. As he uses the Shidori to pierce through the sand dome with relative ease, and not only that, but he uses it to pierce through Gara's shoulder, causing him to bleed for the first time. Now this is when the events will actually play out pretty exactly like it does in canon, as this is where feathers will then fall from the sky as the Konoha crush then begins. Now Orochimaru then reveals his appearance, and this actually immediately catches Naruto, as he couldn't believe that the man he thought he killed was still alive. As Naruto once again remembering everything, his body instantly shifts to killer mode, as this is when a sound shinobi tries to attack him, only for that man's body to be cut apart in an instant. As Naruto once again reverting back to how he was for a moment, actually having his entire arm actually be filled up with ki, turning it into a very sharp ki blade, as he used it to cut the man apart. Now after doing this, Naruto stares coldly at the direction where Orochimaru was, as this is when Kakashi would then arrive at the scene as he tells Naruto to help out Sasuke, as Sasuke, just like in the main timeline, went after Gara. Yet, unfortunately for Kakashi, Naruto does not listen to him, as he was so fixated on Orochimaru that unfortunately, he just simply ignored Kakashi's request as he decides to dash over to the location where Orochimaru was. And this will be during the exact same moment when the Sound 4 would arrive at the scene to put up a barrier to trap Haruzen inside with the Orochimaru. But just as the barrier was about to be completed though, Naruto was able to rush in there before it fully closes, trapping Haruzen, Orochimaru, and Naruto inside of it. Now Orochimaru will be cackling as he thinks that his plan is finally going, in, going the exact same way as he intended it to, only for him to actually feel the presence of Naruto as he had arrived. This immediately catches Orochimaru off guard, but he immediately tries to make use of the situation. He begins talking to Naruto once again, trying to play his own mind games and tricks, but unfortunately Naruto was not listening, as this is when Naruto then blatantly tells Orochimaru to get out of his life, as he tries to actually knock Orochimaru or, uh, sorry, out. But unfortunately though, Orochimaru was a snake for a reason, as he was able to dodge out of the way of Naruto's attack, all while Naruto was still maintaining control over his body, as even though Naruto's body had reverted back to the weapon it once was, Naruto's mind had still remained the same under the transformation, as he was still in control. As Orochimaru would see this, he would be immediately pissed off, as he sees that all that work that he'd done for Naruto was slowly but surely getting unraveled, as Naruto was able to deal with the trauma that happened. While he hasn't exactly forgiven himself for it, even though he knows that would be impossible, he does know to learn how to deal with it at least, or at least at best try to simply ignore it. And seeing this, of course, Orochimaru gets even more pissed off as he fights off against Naruto, with Naruto now that he was actually under control and being able to fight at least somewhat against Orochimaru in this state, actually being able to keep up with him and actually being able to land some pretty decent blows. And Aruzen seeing this will be very happy as he decides to help out Naruto, landing even more damage on Orochimaru. As this will be a this will be a 2v1 with Orochimaru facing off against both Naruto and Aruzen. But unfortunately for the both of them though, Orochimaru still had one more trick, as this is when he decides to kick them both away and activate the reanimation jutsu, bringing back both the second and first Okage. Now this ends up increasing the difficulty, yet somehow someway both Haruzen and Naruto are still able to keep up, as Naruto keeps up with the second Okage while Haruzen deals with the first in Orochimaru, as this will go on for quite a while. But eventually though, Naruto is able to take down the second Okage, even, even if it was only for a little bit, as after that he decides to help out Haruzen, as he takes on the first Okage along with, along with the Ruzen. And with both of their powers combined, they're actually able to take down the first Okage, and once again, only for a little while, as this is when Haruzen then turns his attention onto, onto Orochimaru, as he realizes that he needs to end this now, as Haruzen decides to bust out the Reaper Death Seal. Now, Naruto seeing this begins to ask Haruzen what he's doing, only for him to dodge out the way as both Tobirama as well as Hashirama have no choice but to face off against Naruto, with Naruto having to hold them back. Now this ends up giving Haruzen enough time to complete the jutsu, all while Orochimaru ends up cursing out Haruzen for doing this. Now as Naruto is trying his best to stop both Tobirama and Hashirama though, this is when clones of Haruzen would then arrive to do the Reaper Death Seal as well, as this is where we then see events actually play out exactly like it does in the main timeline, as Naruto would be there to actually watch Haruzen die by Orochimaru. As Orochimaru was able to bring out the Kusanagi blade to stab into Haruzen's chest, all the while Naruto had just simply sat there and looked at it as he couldn't believe it. He takes in everything that happens as he sees Haruzen failing to seal away Orochimaru as all, he was, as all he was able to do was actually seal away Orochimaru's arms, as after that he would then collapse down to the ground, bleeding out as he finally ends up passing away. 
as Orochimaru will be there cursing out Haru's and telling him to bring back his hands. But this is when suddenly, as he was doing this though, this is when he then feels it. An intense pressure was growing as Naruto ends up looking down at Haruzen, the man who was so kind enough to actually try to get back his life, as Naruto begins to actually tear up. This ends up causing Naruto to clench his fist as he begins to actually let out a cry that was so powerful that actually ends up shattering the very barrier that the sound for had put up. This ends up catching everyone off guard and, and, by, and by surprise as Naruto with speeds that Orochimaru has never seen from him before actually ends up punching him through the stomach as literally Naruto has Orochimaru's heart in his hand. Orochimaru ends up looking at Naruto's surprise as he coughs up blood before suddenly ends up laughing as he ends up doing a body substitution one last time. As unfortunately it did take up the rest of his energy but still it was enough for him to get away. As Naruto proceeds to destroy the body that Orochimaru had left behind. As after doing this and after finally releasing all his emotions, Naruto takes a look at everything else and when he does he sees everything very horrifying. As the village in Konoha was up in flames, as the shinobi were trying everything in their power to stop it from happening. And along with that, he also ends up looking at, at a different direction, as we end up seeing the Shikaku now being taken down. Naruto seeing this and finally remembering about Gara as well as Sasuke, he decides to rush over to the location where Sasuke was. As he hops from tree to tree, using his, his even suppressed power to go even further, until eventually he ends up arriving at the scene. But when he does though, he ends up seeing something very horrifying. As currently right now, laying in a pool of blood would be none other than both of Naruto's teammates, as both Sasuke and Sakura were both pretty badly injured from the fight against Gara. Cause you see, when Naruto had chased off to actually help out Haruzen and take down Orochimaru, Sakura had to be the one to go after Sasuke. And because of the fact that Sasuke was already up ahead and facing off against Gara, it did take her a while. And not only that, but thanks to the fact that Naruto was not there to help them, this became an extremely hard fight with them, but were both of them almost losing their lives in the process. As Sasuke was literally forced to tap into the power of the Nine Tails, which the Nine Tails he hated Sasuke, but not exactly the same hate that he gave Naruto when when it was like in the main timeline. Cause at least with Naruto, he tried to be reasonable and actually try to negotiate with him. But with Sasuke, as soon as Sasuke tried to tap into his power, immediately Kuruma had tried to use that power to kill Sasuke causing the fight to be even more difficult, but yet the outcome remains the same, as Sasuke is able to somehow, someway harness the power of the Nine Tails and use it to take down Shikaku. But as he did so, it ends up leaving him in a critical state. With Sakura being there in the battle to try to assist him, but unfortunately, in the battle between Tail Bees, all she did was get in the way, as this ends up resulting in her getting pretty badly injured in the process of trying to help Sasuke. As Naruto was stared down at both his bloody and injured teammates, he begins to feel himself hyperventilate as he collapses down to his knees, unable to believe what he had done, as this is where we then do a time skip. Following the events after the Konoha crush, we end up seeing Naruto, as currently right now he will be listening to the reports about both Sakura and Sasuke's conditions. As currently right now he will be hiding his presence from both the nurses and the doctors, not wanting to make himself noticeable. As after finally listing about all their conditions and, and just how badly injured they were in the process of the Konoha crush, Naruto felt himself clench his fist as he ended up moving away from the area, getting as far away from both Sasuke and Sakura as possible. As he would head into the forest of death, and as he does, he ends up eventually end up arriving to a pond. As when he looks at the pond, he would immediately begin to see his reflection, but instead of the reflection being how he was currently, it would be how he was before. As he will see his old version of him staring back at him, as he will be looking him directly in the eyes with an uncaring expression. Naruto will look at him with a very tearful and a very upset expression, as he did not want to be that person. But unfortunately, it seems as if that was always the case. No matter how many, no matter how much he changes, no matter how hard he tries to make a difference, unfortunately, it always ends up the same way. He always ends up hurting someone. He always ends up being the monster. As Naruto ends up looking down for a few seconds, wondering what he should do next, as he still ends up remembering that Orochimaru is still out there, as he soon ends up coming together with the conclusion. As right in the middle of the night, Naruto ends up returning back to his, his own apartment that Haruzen had gave him, as he then once again realizes that Haruzen is dead. As this will make Naruto's current blank expression even colder, as he begins to pack all his stuff. With the words that Orochimaru had told him in the forest of death were playing in his head, once again announcing to him that he will forever and always be a monster. And Naruto, after finally hearing that, as well as packing up everything, this is when we actually then turn to his mindscape, as currently right now, there will be actually an Orochimaru there just watching everything that Naruto was doing. 
As this was just a figment of Naruto's imagination, but still, Naruto needs to say this. As even though he knows that this isn't the real Orochimaru, Naruto had made it blatantly clear that while yes, he was still a monster, he will become the monster that will hunt down Orochimaru and finally end up being the one to end him. As with that, Naruto will destroy the Orochimaru that he created in his mind, as in that very same night, we will end up actually hearing the announcement that Naruto had left the village. As we do a little bit of a time skip, as by this point of the story, both Sakura and Sasuke have recovered from their injuries and they are soon informed about what happened to Naruto, as this will end up causing the both of them to try to get up and try to hunt him down. But unfortunately, they were still in recovery and not only that, but Naruto by this point has been long gone. As this ends up causing them to curse for the fact that they were still way too weak, this is when Kakashi would then arrive at the scene as he begins to apologize to them as he believes that he failed as a sensei. But the surprise of everyone at Team 7, Sasuke would actually be the one to give Kakashi a motivational speech. As thanks to the changes in Kakashi's character, as well as the fact that he actually decided to train his team seriously in this timeline, this actually ended up causing Sasuke to get out of his emo phase way earlier, as he actually ends up realizing that everyone on the team is there to back him up, as he now genuinely sees everyone on the team as friends. And that became especially clear after the Forest of Death, as you see Sakura, Kakashi, and Naruto as his friends. And speaking of Naruto, he had already decided that he's going to end up bringing Naruto back to the village, even if it meant breaking every bone in his body to do so. As Kakashi, after hearing this and after seeing Sasuke's face of determination, and also Sakura as well, he feels himself be feeling very happy as this is when he then tells his team that he's going to train them to become even stronger in order for them to bring back Naruto, as he also was going to assist them in bringing him back. As after this, this is where we then have a full on time skip. As many years had went by, causing the village of Konoha to prosper as they finally recovered from the damage that Orochimaru had done to them. Another interesting thing is the fact that in this timeline, unfortunately, Tsunade is not the Hokage, as instead of her being the Hokage, it will be Jiraiya. Since the thing is, without Naruto, Tsunade has no reason to really come back to Konoha, and even though Jiraiya would try his best to convince her, unfortunately, she has just completely lost it, as she wants nothing to do with Konoha or Jiraiya. So this basically ends up forcing Jiraiya to take the position of Hokage. But that was not the only change, as Team 7 had also changed as well, as every single one of them had trained hard in order to make sure that they can bring back Naruto, and not only that, but they also trained hard to make sure that none of them end up falling in a mission. As this actually, this actually ends up enabling Team 7 to become one of the strongest teams, as Kakashi makes good on his promise to train his team very well. As this ended up resulting in his team to become an absolute unit, as every single one of them were powerful in their own right, with Sasuke being the strongest member. As with the combination of the Nine Tails as well as the Sharingan, he seemed to be unstoppable. Probably the strongest shinobi, uh, sorry, probably the strongest shinobi in the entire village, besides Jiraiya currently. As he could handle up to three Tails of the Nine Tails' power, and also had already unlocked the Mangiko Sharingan by this point. As every single one of them would go on missions together, as well as putting a stop to the Akatsuki that had been forming, as apparently the Akatsuki has been hunting down the Tail Beast, and Sasuke being one of them, he was also hunted down. But thanks to his power, he is able to take them down one by one, even though there is still quite a few members out there. And another thing is the fact that throughout the times they went on these missions, they find out more and more information about Naruto, as Naruto throughout these many years has truly matured and grown stronger, as thanks to the fact that he began to truly embrace the fact that he was a monster, but a monster meant to hunt down Orochimaru, it made him grow stronger and more powerful. In, sa in fact, he was so powerful enough to the point where he actually gains a larger bounty, as now multiple nations actually wanted Naruto, for their own reasons of course, whether to recruit him or to execute him. Not that Naruto really cared. As thanks to him having the strength, it will be easier for him to hunt down Orochimaru, as every single place where Orochimaru was, there will be a path of destruction that follows afterwards, as Naruto would go to the, the, go to the exact location where he was and obliterate his bases, as he has slaughtered everything that was in there, not really caring at all about the consequences of his actions as all he really wanted was just to end Orochimaru then and there. And the more times that Team 7 would hear rumors about Naruto or his appearance, they try to find the location where he's at, but by the time they end up arriving there, it seems as if the entire area had, be had just been completely decimated as Naruto left nothing in his path. As this will go on for quite a while. As we now continue on with the story though, this is where we actually end up seeing a few events end up playing out pretty similarly to the canon. As thanks to the fact that Team 7 were way stronger, they actually ended up taking down Deidara and Sasori when they tried to steal Gara. and not only that, but they also ended up taking down Hidan and Kakuzu as well, when they decided to kill Asuma. 
But still, most of the events end up playing out pretty similarly, except the person who's replacing Naruto in this one will be Sasuke. As for Naruto, we see something completely different. As Naruto, throughout the entire time the story continues on, he'll still be on his hunt for Orochimaru. But by this point, Naruto's mind has just completely been brimmed. As you see, although Naruto has matured, he has not matured enough to the point where he's been able to push this all behind him. As unfortunately, he's stuck like this for what seems to be his entire lifetime. Till he eventually ends up killing off Orochimaru. But this is where we actually end up seeing something very interesting. As Naruto throughout this time, as he continues on with his travels and his journeys, he ends up seeing a very interesting event. As currently right now taking place, as we end up seeing actually a bunch of men that were currently kidnapping someone, as this person was screaming for her life, Naruto would actually be there looking at it with a blank expression before he just uh, before he single-handedly just completely obliterates the men in an instant, without even looking at the person he just saved. Naruto would look at the scene, wondering why he did it, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter, as he prepared to leave, only for the person to rush over to Naruto and suddenly hug him. Now, this is where we actually end up getting introduced to the person, as this would be none other than the Damiel's daughter, or aka the leader of this nation right now. Naruto would actually be very surprised to see that he actually saved her, but at the end of the day, it wasn't his business, as he simply tells her to return back home in a very blunt and brutal tone. Yet even though he said it like this, she unfortunately did not just get persuaded away instantly, in fact she was quite stubborn as she actually says that she feels better to stay with Naruto instead. Naruto sighs as he tells her to do what, he, what she wants, as he just continues on with his journey to hunt down Orochimaru. But you see, this is where we actually end up seeing something very interesting. As throughout the time that Naruto will continue on with his journey, and eventually end up finding out more bases of where Orochimaru may potentially be, and the more destruction he ends up laying there, the Daimyo's daughter will be there to witness everything. Yet every single time she would, see, she would end up seeing this version of Naruto, the person who killed and slaughtered multiples without any care in the world, she still stood by him throughout the entire time. She was very stubborn and even though she would scold Naruto nonetheless, she would show that she still cared about him as whenever Naruto was seemingly hungry or something about it, she would always end up making sure to take care of him. Naruto did not know why or who the heck she was for even doing this, but at the end of the day she didn't really care at all as this is when we actually end up seeing a change in Naruto as well. As the longer this will go on, with the Damio's daughter always being there to support Naruto and be pretty much an emotional pillar for him, even though it was only unconsciously, Naruto would end up slowly but surely end up falling for her, as this actually ends up causing him to slowly but surely end up moving past the trauma. As time continues on, with the relationship slowly but surely getting stronger over time, it would eventually be time where Naruto would actually end up stopping his journey for a moment as he decides to spend a little bit of time with the Damio's daughter. But unfortunately, Naruto knew is that he can't exactly leave this past behind. Even though she made it seem as if he could, he knew that he couldn't. As in consideration to her and also to himself, he decides to actually end up taking the Damio's daughter back to where she was. Now she ends up telling and honestly begging Naruto to stay with her, but unfortunately, he had a job to finish. Although he does end up making a vow that he will end up returning back. As after hearing this, the Damio's daughter can do nothing more but accept that since it was either that or Naruto completely loses himself in just his path of destruction. As after saying that and saying goodbye to the Damio's daughter, Naruto will continue on with his journey until eventually he finds Orochimaru's base. And by this point, Orochimaru has been waiting for Naruto. Because the thing is, throughout the entire time, Orochimaru has finally created it, a vessel that had some resemblance to Naruto. As you see, throughout the entire time that Naruto has been hunting down Orochimaru, Orochimaru has been preparing himself for a fight against him, as he had created and built up a body that's supposed to be not exactly as good as Naruto's body, but definitely stronger than anyone out there besides Naruto. As he ends up using and actually transfer transferring his soul into this body, allowing him to gain full control over it. As during this point of the story, this is where we then see Naruto break into Orochimaru's base, as this will be the exact base where Orochimaru was waiting for him. As Naruto would tear through the base like he usually does to the other ones, he would eventually end up seeing Orochimaru in a dark crowded room. As Orochimaru would end up summoning out the Kusanagi blade to which he had recovered fully, making the blade once again appear as he uses it to try to stab Naruto. However, instead of stabbing Naruto, the blade would just simply push Naruto back as Naruto would be sent flying out of Orochimaru's base, but luckily he's able to recover. As once he recovers, he ends up grabbing the blade, not even caring if it cuts him a little bit, as he then suddenly pulls on the blade, dragging Orochimaru towards him. Now Orochimaru will be sent flying, as no matter how strong this new body is, unfortunately when it comes to a contest of strength, Naruto was never going to be beaten. 
As once Orochimaru was close enough, Naruto would then reel back his fist as he, as he prepares to slam his fist directly into Orochimaru's stomach. Only to be surprised as Orochimaru would then suddenly burst into multiple snakes as he used a substitution. Naruto ends up cursing as this is when he has to dodge out of the way if a generous fire jutsu that was trying to be aimed right at him. As we see Naruto and Orochimaru end up staring at each other with Orochimaru telling Naruto that it's time for him to come back home, with Naruto just declaring that he doesn't have one. As with that being said, this is where we then see both Naruto and Orochimaru continue on with their clash. Their clash lasting so long to the point where literally it was going on for days and maybe even weeks as Orochimaru's new vessel was holding up quite nicely thanks to the Hashirama cells that it's been imported with. Not only that, but also Kirimaru's bone release was actually helping him, helping his body take some of the blows that Naruto would release. All while Naruto was not caring at all, as no matter how many days went by, his body would remain the same as he can continue fighting for much longer periods of time. As the fight would continue on. But you see, throughout the entire fight, Orochimaru would be very proud of his new vessel, as he can just only imagine what would it be like once he has Naruto added into it. But this one he would then be surprised, as his vessel was actually reaching a limit as Naruto finally decided that he was going to stop holding back fully. Cause you see, throughout this entire time, Naruto has been simply playing with Orochimaru, as he was enjoying the feeling of breaking down Orochimaru's body one by one, but now it was finally time for him to obliterate him. As this is when Naruto begins to truly release the raw potential he has trapped away, as suddenly Naruto's hair turns into a very emerald-like green, as he ends up screaming out to the skies as a green energy wave then shoots out of him, causing the sky to darken, as is when Naruto then turns his attention onto Orochimaru. As now that Naruto had fully released his potential fully, that means the power of the legendary Super Saiyan was finally flowing through, as Naruto's own raw material instincts were finally kicking in. As these were not the instincts of a killer, no, these were the instincts of an animal, as it was ready to finally hunt down its prey. As seeing Naruto in this form and feeling his pressure, Orochimaru will once again feel that feeling, true fear. As this will be the second time he ever felt this, with the only other time being from when Haruzen almost sealed him away. As this is when Orochimaru ends up saying something that makes him even more terrified. As Naruto will then suddenly crack a smile, a smile full of malice, a smile that just shows that he's gonna end up enjoying killing him, and something that Orochimaru has never truly seen on Naruto's face. Cause mind you, throughout this entire time, Naruto has not smiled, alright? Did he seem relaxed? Did he have a peaceful aura around him sometimes? Sure, but never fully smile. And the craziest thing is, every single time that Naruto ends up releasing his emotions, Orochimaru had been there to see it. As the very first time that Naruto cried, he had been there. And now the very first time that Naruto is happy, he had been there. And the craziest thing, he was the cause for both of these emotions. As this is when Naruto then looks directly at Orochimaru, as he asked him if he actually loves his life. And Orochimaru, after hearing this, already understood what Naruto meant, as Naruto was going to destroy the very one thing that he valued most in this world, this being his life. He immediately tries to walk away, but unfortunately it doesn't work out, as Naruto will be appearing right in front of him and suddenly snapping his leg. Orochimaru ends up screaming out in pain as he tries to crawl, to crawl away, activating substitution, really doing anything, but unfortunately no matter what he did, Naruto would be able to send it flying using a just, just pressure from himself, literally destroying whatever Orochimaru threw at him. As Orochimaru ends up crawling away before eventually he ends up hitting a wall, he sees Naruto approaching with a cruel smile on his face, as this is when Naruto begins to heat up his hand with a bunch of ki. He looks at Orochimaru directly in the eyes, as this is when Naruto then puts his hand on Orochimaru's chest, as he literally forces his hand to slowly but surely crush itself directly into Orochimaru's chest. It will be one of the most brutalest ways that Orochimaru had ever went out, as all he's able to do is scream out in pain. He tries one last chance at the body substitution, but by this point, Naruto has killed off all his vessels. Literally, Naruto has gone to every single one of Orochimaru's bases, completely obliterated them, leaving nothing left, as the only thing that will be left behind will be nothing more but a generous wasteland where Orochimaru's base once stood. As now seeing that this was the true end of it all, Orochimaru in one last desperate attempt actually begins to burst out in tears as Naruto will be there to actually look at it as Orochimaru begins to actually beg him to let him live. But yet, Naruto didn't care at all. In fact, he laughs at the tears that Orochimaru was spilling, as he couldn't believe that the man once so prideful in his own research, a man so prideful in his work, his studies, and pretty much his own life, had finally been brought down to tears, as it finally showed how pathetic Orochimaru truly was. As after seeing this, Naruto then decides to finish it off, as when one last final push through his arms, Orochimaru would then be killed off as literally, 
His, his entire chest is simply caved in because of Naruto's hand. As Naruto would look at what he'd done with a smile on his face. As after that, Naruto ends up backing away as he then prepares a ginormous key cannon. As he looks at Orochimaru's body one last time, he ends up smirking as it is when he ends up pointing the cannon directly at Orochimaru and then obliterating it. But not only did he obliterate Orochimaru, but he obliterated the rest of the land currently. As after that, once again, it will be left into a wasteland. Just like how Naruto left everything else. As after that, Naruto ends up leaving the scene as he had finally done what he wanted to. He finally ended up killing off Orochimaru. As now he can finally move from his path of being a destroyer. As this is where we now continue on with the story with the time skip. As the next following months went by, we ended up eventually seeing the end of the Akatsuki. As the one doing it would actually, would actually be Sasuke instead of Naruto in this timeline, because Sasuke has the nine tails and everything, and he's also the protector and savior of Konoha. As this actually made everyone change their opinion on Sasuke and actually look at him as a valued member of the Hidden Leaf, and also making Sasuke quite popular like he was in the main timeline. But you see, as this would continue on for quite a while, Sasuke was still on a hunt for Naruto. As after taking on, I'm sorry, after taking down Itachi and after taking down the Akatsuki, he had heard no more signs of Naruto after he, after hearing that he took down Orochimaru. So due to this, it actually made him worry. And he was not the only one as the rest of the Team 7 still continued going on missions together, but they never were able to find him. Until one day they were able to. Cause you see, after many months had went by, to the point where it was actually almost a year, they were eventually able to find Naruto, as they actually ended up finding out that he was actually in a relationship with the Damio's daughter. Now this of course led them to actually confront Naruto, as they actually had a mission to go check out the Damio, and in the process of going there, they eventually ended up meeting up with Naruto. But this Naruto was different. As instead of being the destroyer that he was meant to be, or the one that they actually remembered back in Konoha, this Naruto looked already way more mature and had a mature aura around him. As Naruto, after the event with Orochimaru, he had finally kept his promise and actually returned back to the Damio's daughter. As throughout that time, they actually ended up getting together as Naruto is now slowly but surely leaving the past behind. And while he doesn't exactly forgive himself about everything that happened, he does know how to live with it now. As now Naruto truly felt as if he was at peace, and along with being at peace, he actually also is beginning to gain more and more control over that potential, as he literally can almost bring it out almost in instantaneously without any problems at all. In Team 7, after seeing Naruto meeting up with him again, this actually brought smiles to their faces as they finally see that Naruto is doing good for himself, as that was all they actually wanted to see and find out. But just as they were preparing to leave though, this is when Sasuke actually turns to Naruto for one second. As there's been something that he's always been wanting to ask Naruto since he ever found out about him. Ever since he found out about Naruto's powers and abilities, he always wanted to ask this about Naruto. As he didn't ask Naruto if he will be willing to have a fight with him. Now this actually caught everyone off guard as Adamio's daughter would be there to listen to this as she immediately tries to storm up to Sasuke and begin to berate him for even trying to have Naruto fight again. But Naruto ends up calming her down, telling her that he would actually do so, surprisingly, to everyone. Even Sasuke felt like he stepped out of line with that one, but it seems as if Naruto was more than willing. As when Naruto was back at the Hidden Leaf Village, he also had similar thoughts to that. As after hearing this, Sasuke smirks as they decide to both make their way to a very certain location. Now, immediately the Damio's daughter as well as the rest of Team 7 were worried, but both Sasuke as well as Naruto send them a confident smirk, pretty much already telling them that everything was going to be alright. As with that, Sasuke ends up body flickering Naruto to the very location, the Valley of the End. As as soon as they end up arriving at this valley, Sasuke ends up turning to Naruto as he begins to explain what this valley ends up symbolizing and everything with Naruto understanding. As pretty much this was going to be the end for a generation pretty much. And Sasuke wanted to end it off with a bang. As after hearing this, Naruto nods his head as this is when he begins to slowly but surely power up. As he only begins to go to only 50, I'm sorry, 25% of his power. And Sasuke seeing this smirks as this is when he didn't activate the eternal manga kill Sharingan. As he had already stolen it from Itachi in this timeline. As yes, unfortunately, he still ends up killing Itachi. But he does end up learning a valuable lesson from Itachi. And also finds out that it wasn't him who, well no, not that it wasn't him. More like it, like he didn't want to slaughter the clan pretty much. So thanks to this, Sasuke ends up activating the eternal Sharingan. As after that, we would then get a fight between both of them. Naruto and Sasuke then rush to the very center of the Valley of the End as they both collide with a simple punch. And immediately after that punch, Sasuke has to reel him back 
as he will be sent flying because of that one punch from Naruto. Luckily, he's able to recover thanks to the fox's chakra, as Sasuke ends up cursing himself with Kuruma currently right now monologuing inside his mindscape, pretty much explains to Sasuke about what he needs to do. Because you see, like I said, all the events that happened in Naruto during this point actually ends up happening to Sasuke except much sooner with Kakashi's help. As that means Sasuke by this point is actually pretty well connected with Kuruma, and while they're not exactly all buddy-buddy, they are for sure partners at least. As with Kuruma's help, Sasuke begins to power up in power as well as heal off the injury that Naruto had inflicted on him, all while Naruto would continue staring down at Sasuke with a look that showed no intent at all. This threw, this threw, um, I'm sorry, this threw Sasuke off guard as he then rushes at Naruto once again as he begins to get into a Taijutsu battle, to which Naruto just easily dominated. And seeing the fact that he can't win in Taijutsu, Sasuke tries to go to Ninjutsu as he begins to release fireball jutsus and a bunch of lightning jutsus as well, trying to make sure that he can get some type of damage off of Naruto. And Naruto, seeing the attacks approaching, actually powers up to 50%, as Naruto's hair then suddenly gains a greenish tint, reminding Sasuke about what he did to Orochimaru during the Forest of Death. And even though he's supposed to be afraid of this, he ends up smiling, as this is when Naruto ends up literally spearing himself directly through all of Sasuke's jutsus, as he then suddenly tackles Sasuke through the very head of Madara as Sasuke has to reel back from the pain. As Naruto looks over Sasuke though, this is when Sasuke has to nearly dodge out of the way of a punch that literally ends up coming from Naruto which ends up shattering the rest of the face of Madara as Sasuke ends up looking at him completely in shock of his power. As after seeing how much damage that Naruto had done, Sasuke then decides to try out his own powers as this is when he then calls upon Kuruma. As Kuruma slowly but surely begins to give Sasuke energy as Sasuke then goes into the three tail cloak as he kicks Naruto away. Now Naruto ends up getting pushed back a little bit because of the attack, but as soon as he's able to recover, as Sasuke then rushes at Naruto with the three tail cloak on, as Sasuke would then yell out for an Amaterasu. The flames would envelop all of Naruto's skin as his body ends up reeling back a little bit because of the pain, as Sasuke would then come from above as he ends up striking at Naruto with the Shidori. Yet Naruto, after seeing the Shidori and after reeling back from the pain, he will soon be able to suddenly end up dodging out the way of Sasuke's Shidori, as he would then grab Sasuke by the head and suddenly slam him into the water, causing a ginormous boom to be heard all around the valley of the end. As a geyser would actually end up forming because of the slam. As Sasuke ends up getting a little bit winded because of the damage, this is when Naruto would instantly end up dragging him through the water and then soon dragging him through the dirt of the valley of the end, as Sasuke has to get repeatedly hit because of this. But soon Sasuke is able to recover enough as this is when he once again calls upon Kuruma, as Kuruma begins to supply Sasuke with not only three, but this time being five tails, as he ends up pushing Naruto away. Naruto ends up jumping back as he sees Sasuke deeming this new cloak, along with the eternal Sharingan, as this is when Sasuke ends up glaring at Naruto, before suddenly activating Amaterasu again, with the black flames completely enveloping Naruto this time, like literally Naruto's body is not at all visible. In seeing this, Sasuke then begins to charge up a tail beast bomb, although only a miniature one, as he ends up shooting it from his mouth, causing generous destruction to the valley of the end. As Sasuke ends up looking through the smoke, trying to see if there was any sign of Naruto, as well as trying to use the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan to keep track of him, this is when suddenly he ends up sensing a generous pressure fall upon him, as he slowly ends up turning around only to see Naruto standing right there, as Naruto's hair will be glowing a greenish glow, and not only that, but he will literally be releasing this greenish aura pretty much that's, that's actually visible. As Sasuke ends up looking at Naruto in surprise, this is when Naruto would then suddenly just simply poke Sasuke in the chest. And after this, Sasuke has to reel back from the pain as literally Naruto ends up knocking Sasuke out of the QB cloak, sending him flying and crashing through a once again the Madara statue. As Sasuke has to reel back from the pain once again as he literally almost feels himself fall into complete unconsciousness, this is when he then realizes that he needs to wrap this up. As Kuruma after seeing how powerful Naruto was and telling Sasuke that he was a fool to challenge him. Sasuke ends up just simply laughing, telling him that he'd much rather go down like this than go down any other way. As honestly, he was really happy to actually fight Naruto like this, so they finally made him fully understand what Naruto had to go through, what it meant to finally be his amazing power, yet being scared of what you can do with it. As with that, Sasuke ends up exiting, exiting out of the crater as he looks at Naruto with a whole new look in his eyes, as is when he then tells Naruto that it's time for them to finish it with one last attack. As Naruto after hearing this would nod his head, as after seeing Naruto nod his head, Sasuke will be thanking Naruto for this opportunity as he busts out the Susanoo along with the Kayubi cloak. 
as this one like forming the an incomplete version of the one that Naruto and Sasuke do in the main timeline, but it will be a combination of both the Susano and the Kurama avatar. But like I said, it's incomplete. And Naruto, after seeing this, nods his head as this when he then powers up to 100%. As Naruto's literal presence was really shaking up the very foundation of the entire Valley of the End. As Sasuke is seeing this, he can do nothing more but just simply admit like how amazing it was. As he thanks Naruto for this opportunity as he ends up shooting out a combination of the Tell Beast Bomb and an arrow shot out from the Susanoo as well, along with the Amaterasu, as he combines all three attacks into one simple cannon. As Naruto after seeing this then ends up charging up a generous green beam, as he ends up compressing it into the palm of his hands as he looks at the attack approaching. As this is when he then pulls back before suddenly ends up releasing it. As if you guys actually want reference to how exactly this attack looked like, then I actually think of it as Vegeta's Gallic Gun actually, as I actually took inspiration from that for this attack. As thanks to this attack, Naruto actually ends up easily destroying Sasuke's ultimate move, as Sasuke inside the Susano and Kurama avatar, he will see the attack approaching as all he could do is actually smile. As honestly, he was actually really glad to actually be given this opportunity, and not only that, but he was honestly really glad that he was able to find Naruto and pretty much achieve all, all that he wanted. As with that nod of his head, Sasuke was satisfied of how everything turned out. And not knowingly, but these two actually end up breaking the Ashura and the Indra cycles. As we end up seeing Sasuke lose the fight, with both the Susano and Kurama avatar being completely obliterated by Naruto's beam, and Sasuke being completely caught up in it as he will be sent flying and once again crashing into the Madara statue for the last time. As by this point, the Madara statue was just completely obliterated after Naruto was done. As after that, we end up seeing Naruto's reaction to this as he does nothing more but stare down at Sasuke as he nods his head before walking off, telling Sasuke that it was an enjoyable experience, before suddenly giving him a smile, one that he does not give quite frequently, but when he does, he's actually truly genuine with it. All the while, Sasuke will actually be there in the crater as he will be pretty bloody and bruised, but he would have a smile on his face, pretty happy that he was actually able to face off against his friend even if it was only for the very first and last time. As after this, we can now do a time skip. As after that fight against Naruto, Sasuke soon ends up getting patched up by Sakura, as after that they end up leaving the area with Kakashi just telling Naruto how proud he was, as he ends up leaving as well. Now after this, they also end up giving the report to Jiraiya who was happy to see that his godson was still alive, and even though he wasn't able to play that much of a big role in his life, he was happy to see that Naruto was doing good for himself. As after that, the rest of the story actually ends up diverting completely from the canon, as thanks to the fact that Sasuke as well as the rest of the group from Konoha were able to take care of the Akatsuki much sooner, this actually ended up causing them to not be able to gather all the tail beasts in time. So that means that Obito's plan to bring back the Ten Tails was completely demolished by Sasuke as well as Konoha, as Obito tries one last chance to get his revenge. But unfortunately that fails miserably, as eventually Sasuke as well as the rest of Team 7 were able to take him down relatively easily, revealing who he was and of course surprising Kakashi because he couldn't believe that Obito was still alive, as after that unfortunately they're forced to take away Obito's one eye, which literally makes him, you know, completely blind and everything, and not only that but they ended up keeping him in prison for life. Which although this was really hard on Kakashi, he was still able to move on from this as this actually enabled him to move, to move on from his past allowing him to grow once again as a character. As this will pretty much be the end for the Konoha side of things as we now turn to Naruto. As by this point now, Naruto has fully moved on from his past. As now that he settled down with the Damio's daughter and actually started up a family with her, Naruto is living a pretty lavish lifestyle now. Now, even though Naruto still has some old reminders of the past here and there, he has learned to move past it as he now focuses on the future. As Naruto does end up having, the, having his own children, and not only that, but he actually makes he makes sure to use his power responsibly to make sure they keep them safe all the time. As they got so good to the point where literally Naruto is really next in line to become the next Damio. As once the current one passes away, Naruto will be next in line. As Naruto truly had fully moved on from the person that he once was. As this will bring the end to what if Naruto had Broly's potential. Thank you all so much for tuning into this what if. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. As this will be your host, Sage D Samurai, and finally, he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.